Although they're seen as a relatively modern invention, the history of the excavator reaches back almost 200 years. Each stage of their development has been driven by a boom in industry and construction requiring increasingly complex mechanized solutions. In the early 1800s, even heavy construction work was still carried out by large teams of laborers using simple hand tools. The Industrial Revolution sweeping the globe needed large volumes of raw materials and the means to move these over long distances. Teams of men with basic tools were simply not up to the challenge, but advances in manufacturing and technology would soon change this. The first excavators were steam-powered. The Scottish inventor James Watt and the English entrepreneur Matthew Bolton developed the first steam-powered excavator back in 1796. The first patent was granted to William Otis for his steam-powered partial oscillator, a construction machine on a railway chassis whose boom could only be partially rotated. The steam excavators of the 19th century were the first high-powered construction machines for moving earth and contributed significantly to the process of industrialization. They are what made the construction of canals, such as the Suez Canal in 1865, railway lines, open cast mines, and large industrial plants at all possible. Greater mobility was provided by the development of caterpillar tracks, which allowed the machines to be moved independently of railway lines. The end of steam engines came in the 1930s. Diesel and electric drives were cheaper and took over the market. A Brief History of Crawler Excavators The first crawler was patented in 1901. It was used for tractors and forestry. The American Benjamin Holt designed a crawler track in 1904. The system was used by the British Army, among others, for the artillery tractors that were common at the time. The soldiers named the tractor Caterpillar because the movement of the chain links resembled that of an insect. Holt immediately secured the brand name. Fifteen years later, in 1925, his company would merge into what is today the largest manufacturer of construction machinery. In 1830s America, railroad construction was booming in an effort to provide a network of fast, direct connections between centers of commerce and industry. Speed was of the essence, with engineering firms earning bonuses for swift completion of the work. Inspired by this, a 22-year-old inventor from Pelham, Massachusetts developed a solution. Known as the grandfather of the hydraulic excavator, William Otis, along with an engineer named Charles French, invented the first steam shovel. Created for the engineering firm Carmichael and Fairbanks for their contract building the Boston Albany Railroad, it was revolutionary. Sharing many features with modern excavators, the Otis power shovel was the first example of self-powered earth-moving equipment. As internal combustion engines had yet to be invented, it was propelled on rails by a boiler and steam engine. A swinging boom attached to a fixed mast held a dipper arm and toothed bucket holding 1 cubic yard 0.76 cubic meters of waste. The bucket was raised and lowered using a double drum chain hoist triggered by a man on the ground. The boom was moved from side to side by two other workers using heavy ropes. In 1839, William patented a steam-powered crane excavator, further improving on his design. Due to its cost, this took some time to become popular as immigrant labor was still so cheap. Eventually, his designs would be used on projects as large as the construction of the Panama Canal. Sadly, William died from typhoid fever, aged just 26, and never lived to see the massive contribution he made to the construction industry. The first hydraulic excavator would not appear until 1882, built by Sir W. G. Armstrong and company in England. They realized hydraulic force was a far more efficient source of power 
for digging and employed it in a groundbreaking design. Used in the construction of hull docks, the excavator used water in place of modern hydraulic fluid. Although many contested status as a true hydraulic excavator, the original definition of hydraulic as operated by water still holds true. However, it was something of a hybrid, as cables were used to operate the bucket with a cylinder operating multiplying sheaves. Before this, all excavators were cabled, and this is the first acknowledged use of a hydraulic excavator in a practical application. In 1897, the Kilgore Machine Company of America produced the Direct Acting Excavator, the first all-hydraulic excavator. This used four direct-acting steam cylinders, doing away entirely with cables and chains. Being built almost entirely of steel, it was far sturdier and hard-wearing than previous designs. The use of hydraulic cylinders meant every action of the excavator was cushioned reducing wear on the machine itself. Its simple design reduced the number of working parts, making maintenance easier and reducing the likelihood of breakdowns. Like modern excavators, it could be operated by one worker whose movement of the controls was instantly replicated by the machine itself. The bucket could be dumped by operating a foot pedal rather than relying on a second operator. In common with modern excavators, the engineer's station also swung with a dipper rather than being part of a rigid frame. Again, despite its innovative design, the excavator struggled to gain the recognition it deserved. After the Second World War, the world experienced a period of industrial and economic recovery. New trade deals were secured and the damage of years of conflict had to be repaired. In 1948, two Italian brothers, Mario and Carlo Brunieri, designed the prototype of the first mass-produced hydraulic excavator. The patent for this design was granted in 1951, but met with limited success. However, producers in other countries foresaw its widespread applications, and in 1954, the French company SICAM obtained the patent. Successful marketing in France led to production by Priestman in England, Mitsubishi in Japan, Draught in America, and Tusa in Spain. The brothers retained an interest in the production of the excavators, and in 1963, the Yumbo excavator gained worldwide recognition. Mini Excavator Japan in the 1960s was in the midst of an economic boom requiring urban development to house an increasing workforce. Reduced space in built-up urban areas demanded a more compact alternative to bulky traditional excavators. Spurred on by this demand, the Yanmar Construction Company produced the first mini-excavator, the YNB300. Its small frame and wheel chassis allowed it to operate in more confined spaces, and it was soon in widespread use. Founded in 1912, Yanmar were originally a manufacturer of engines for heavy construction equipment. They are now one of the premier manufacturers of mini-excavators, with branches worldwide. The success of the YNB300 led to production of the YNB600C, with increased operator comfort and performance. The addition of a swing excavator boom allowed this model to operate against walls, increasing its versatility. Over the following 20 years, Many manufacturers followed suit with firms such as Kubota, JCB, and Manito releasing their own ranges of mini excavators. Mini excavator hire became a boom market as the versatility of the equipment suited them to a wide range of applications. 1998 saw the release of the Yanmar VI040, the first zero tail swing excavator, and many mini and micro excavators soon followed. The development of excavator attachments vastly increased the range of jobs they could perform. Hybrid technology in plant machinery became common in the 2010s, lowering production and operator usage costs and increasing efficiency. Areas of application from the garden to open cast mining 
A wide range of attachments and different model sizes, excavators can cover highly diverse fields of application. The task of an excavator is, to put it casually, to dig. That is, to move soil and rock. This includes loosening and excavating ground depressions, such as construction pits, or transporting excavated and fill material. The range of different excavator models is as wide as the possible applications. Many excavators weigh less than a ton and are sometimes only 70 centimeters wide. They can therefore fit through doors and do work inside buildings. Many excavators weigh up to 10 tons and are usually wheeled excavators. Medium-sized excavators weigh up to 60 tons. The larger models are crawler excavators and are mostly used for light earthworks on construction sites or heavy earthworks in canal and road construction. In quarries, large excavators weighing up to 200 tons can be found. The largest excavators, some of which have an operating weight of over 10,000 tons, are used in ore extraction and open cast mining. This is also where the world's largest excavator, a bucket wheel crawler excavator, has been found since 1978. The 288 from Krupp Industria Technik is located in the Garsweiler open cast ignite mine in Germany. This monster weighs 13,500 tons, is 96 meters high, and 240 meters long. With its bucket wheel, the 288 excavates up to 240,000 tons of coal every day. Naturally, the 288 is a crawler excavator. It runs on three rows of four caterpillars, each with an individual width of 3.8 meters. This creates such a large contact surface that the excavator hardly exerts any pressure on the ground despite its immense weight. At only 17.1 Newton per centimeter square, it doesn't even leave a deep rut on grass. Current Trends in the Construction Industry The two major research topics in the construction industry, climate protection and digitalization, also affect crawler excavators. With GPS and automated control, it's already possible to carry out earth-moving works with precision down to the centimeter, more accurately than the most experienced excavator operator. But there's still a long way to go before the construction site is fully digitalized. In the climate protection category, the Bama Innovation Award 2022 was presented to Liber France SAS. The construction machinery manufacturer has developed a crawler excavator with a hydrogen engine, the R9XXH2 is still a prototype, but series production is scheduled to start by 2025. The desire for innovation is overshadowed by the tense economic and geopolitical situation. Prices and inflation are rising and spreading uncertainty, even though the construction industry is currently going through hard times. Investments are still being made. However, cost optimization takes first priority here. Future investments are prioritized in such a way that they bring in profits as soon as possible. Buying used machines is an investment with an ideal cost-to-benefit ratio. Compared to new machines, used machines are much cheaper and available right away. Both are essential factors when planning investments. That wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay notified about our uploads. I'll see you next time. Till then, peace out.